This video is brought to you by Describe. Link in the description for 10% off your first subscription payment. The Dungeon, a classic location in Dungeons and Dragons. Places of festering evil, perilous traps and vicious monsters, all testing the might of our would-be heroes. Hey all, I'm Sebastian and this is my atmospheric guide for the dungeon location for you dungeon masters. Today we'll take a look at some methods for elevating your table setups with lighting, sounds, music, as well as some ideas on how to use the terrain. On the table I have some unpainted dungeon tiles with some simple coloured lights to show how these techniques come together. Now these are just some cheap lights, but if you use something like smart bulbs or DMAX lighting then these methods should translate to a variety of setups. If you like the look of this stuff, I'll leave links to the equipment as well as any music or sound effects that I'll mention along the way. Now, let's descend into the dungeon. What seemed to be a humble crypt reveals stairs that descend into darkness. A dismal place rank with stale air and decay, each step downwards growing colder, a feeling of dread weighing heavily on your shoulders. The shadows stir with rats and vermin as they scurry away from the echoes of your footfalls. This is our introduction to the dungeon. It sets the atmosphere for the players by drawing on a sense of mystery by describing smells, sensations and their physical presence in the space. For ambient sound, I'm using some ambience from Michael Gelfie that's called Simple Cave that has some subtle subterranean noises. And to help build on that ominous feeling, I'm using some tabletop RPG music in my darkness playlist. Now before we get into the lighting, there's a bunch of different ways we can use terrain as the adventure starts. The goal is to establish the feeling of the location and become a roleplay anchor for everyone at the table. Even if you decide to mostly use theatre of the mind, having just a few terrain pieces and some minis gets everyone on the same page for roleplay. To even make these unpainted dungeon tiles more atmospheric, I'm using some purple and blue lighting to create a feeling of darkness but not hide everything in shadows. If you wanted to give more of an undead flavour, you could substitute some of the purple for some green. To break up that wash of light, I like to use some simple LEDs like these greens and oranges in the environment. These can be great to give the impression of torchlight or a feeling of some eerie magic. Now this one's very much optional, but pin spots are great to make things more cinematic. Like stage lighting, these cut through the ambient light and create a focus area on the table. I've modified this one with a little 3D printable mount on the front here to slide in my own coloured gels for different types of effects. If you want to boost the lighting even more, I've got some affordable fog effects happening in this space. Near the terrain, I've got the Reptile Fogger puffing away with a pipe dispersal for some ground cover. Video here if you want to hear more about that smoke machine. It's only on its lowest setting because all that fog is being boosted by all the lighting that we've got going on. I also have some room haze here being made from a cheap smoke machine to give any lighting some volume. I have this one on a timer at long intervals to help maintain a consistent low level of haze. Now that we've got the base of our atmosphere going, it's time for the players to start exploring the dungeon. We want to do our best to build tension and foreshadow parts of the environment that can lead to great story moments. If the players wander into a deadly trap or are trying to stay hidden, using a heartbeat sound effect or playing some suspenseful music like from the suspense playlist heightens the tension. Now if you're using terrain, there are a couple of ways we can reveal the dungeon as it's explored. But what's some good exploration without some finely detailed descriptions like from this video sponsor, Describe. Describe offers thousands of professionally written scenes, places, monsters and spells that bring a creative thrill to your games. I often find that it's a great source of inspiration when preparing a game for my family and friends or if the adventure goes off the beaten path. They're just like the box text from your favourite adventure books but designed to be read aloud in your own campaign. Visit Describe by the link in the description and use the code ATMOSSEEKER at checkout for 10% off your first subscription payment. Let's get back to the show. So as more of the dungeon is revealed, there are a couple of different ways we can use terrain. 
Some folks like to have a whole dungeon laid out, which works well for multi-session dungeon crawls, but it can be hard to achieve if you're a little bit more limited on table space and the amount of terrain you have at your disposal. One alternative is to have pre-assembled rooms and hallways so that as the players explore, you can lay down each section. Other than now keeping the layout of the dungeon more hidden, it also allows you to cut or rearrange sections of the dungeon mid-play to control the pace of the adventure and get a good balance of exploration, combat and roleplay. If you're more limited on terrain, you can also use Theatre of the Mind for most of the exploration and then you can use terrain for more prepared encounter layouts for hazards or a boss room. Now dungeons can be a very dangerous place for our heroes with the possibility of combat around any corner. Typically with the types of monsters and aberrations they might encounter, the scary combat playlist would do a great job of creating a sense of danger and dread. When using monster sound effects, while it does do a good job of giving your monsters more presence, if it's too repetitive, it can become a bit of a distraction. One approach is instead to use a set of sounds for an individual monster and activate a random sound when needed, like this zombie button here that uses a random action to play a different zombie growl every time it's pressed. Another trick I quite like is grounding the monster sounds onto the table itself to create a small audio zone on the tabletop. You can create one of these by using a small Bluetooth speaker and pairing it to your phone. Here I'm using a sound pad from Tabletop Audio to make some monster sounds near the action. It creates an illusion that those miniatures are making the sounds themselves and making them feel more alive. While I might leave the lighting mostly unchanged in combat, the pin spot here can be a handy tool, especially if you have it mounted in a good position for DM control. On this table microphone stand, I can re-aim it to wherever the action is, and I can even tint it for different types of monsters or even magical effects. So, were your players lucky enough to make it out alive? I'd love to hear how you would add more tension and atmosphere in the comments below. It's the kind of thing I love to talk about with folks on the Atmoseeker Discord, which is available for my amazing supporters on Patreon. A huge thanks to all my patrons with a special shout out to Blake Dale, Chase McAllister, Chris Andrus, Chris Johnson, John A. Johnson, Luke Mansberger, and Charisma on Command. If you would like to see more locations explored for atmospheric ideas and tools, then let me know in the comments. Until then, check out some of these videos. Until next time, I'm Sebastian, and let's create and inspire.